Have you ever had the feeling that your phone's ringing in your pocket, but it turns out not to be? Well, a paper published in the BMJ shows that you're not alone. We caught up with the authors at Bayside Medical Centre to find out more. Hello. Hi, this is the BMJ. So, what's your paper called? My paper is called Phantom Vibration Syndrome. Oh, put it on speaker. Okay. And who am I talking to now? Uh, this is Dr. Michael Rothberg. I'm the lead author on the paper. Um, it's called Phantom Vibration Syndrome, and it's actually something that happened to me. Um, phantom vibrations are when people feel that their pager or their cell phone is vibrating when, in fact, it's not. They think that they're getting a call, but there's actually nothing there. And uh, it's actually was quite annoying to me, and so I wanted to find out whether other people were experiencing it as well. And so I said, let's do a survey. And I got Dr. Aurora here to help me, and uh, the two of us designed the survey together. Uh, and then we sent it out to medical personnel who we knew were going to carry paid. Sorry about that. Um, what did your survey look at? Uh, the survey was basically, it was a 17-question survey. Uh, it consist of, consisted of more of the like demographic data, like their age and their sex. And uh, we also looked at if they carry any electronic devices, which would be like pagers, uh, cell phones. Uh, and uh, we also looked at how, I mean, uh, if they have experienced this syndrome. And if they did, how long it took for them to experience this phantom vibration after they started using uh, the electronic device on the vibrate mode. And then we looked at very specifically they were using this uh, electronic device, um, uh, uh, like whether they would keep it more on the belt or on the breast pocket, uh, and if there was any relation between uh, using it at a particular location and experiencing more of this phantom vibration syndrome. And there was a decent response. So what did you find? We got actually quite a good response. Uh, oh, about three quarters of the people that we surveyed actually gave us an answer, which is unusual. And about two-thirds of them had actually experienced uh, these phantom vibrations. Um, the other thing that was interesting is that uh, most of the people didn't really find it that bothersome. I personally found it very troubling. Uh, and uh, about only about 1% of the people that we asked actually said that it was very bothersome to them. Uh, now, that doesn't really sound like a lot, but if you think that there's about 3 billion people right now who are carrying some kind of electronic device on the planet, if even 1% of them are very troubled by this, uh, then it could be a significant number of people. Does this mean you've discovered a new medical condition? Uh, well, we didn't discover it, but we're the first ones to describe it. Um, it's certainly been out there in the popular press. There's actually three Facebook sites uh, for uh, sufferers from phantom vibration syndrome. But we're the first ones to say quite how common it is and what the risk factors are for developing it. Are there any dangers associated with this? I think it's really irritating is really what it is. It's just that, you know, you have this sensation and you can't make it go away and you keep feeling for your pager and it's, uh, it's not going off. Um, phantom is not actually correct. I mean, it's not technically a phantom. It's technically a hallucination. Um, but I think hallucination is even scarier than phantom because it makes it sound like you've got some kind of mental illness. Um, but in fact, it's a totally normal uh, sensory phenomenon. And I think that our... Um, our study shows that it, it's normal. Two-thirds of the people experienced it, so it's, uh, it's really part of normal human physiology. So if this is a hallucination, what's causing it? Right. Well, we don't really know for certain, uh, but we do have some theories about why this should happen. The brain has a lot of information that's coming into it, and it has to filter out what's going on uh, all the time. You know, uh, for example, right now, uh, my brain is giving me all kinds of information about the clothing that I'm wearing and the temperature in the room, but I can't be focusing on that or I'll get confused. So I need to have some kind of a filter going on, and so I do what's called hypothesis-guided search. So I'm searching for things that I'm expecting to find and then seeing whether they're actually there. If I were in the forest and I were looking for a snake and I saw a stick under a bush, I might mistake it for a snake. Uh, on the other hand, if I were looking for a stick, I might have no trouble picking it out as a stick. Uh, so because we think that pages are important, uh, because they may have very important information, or phone calls, or 
uh, text messages, uh, we're always looking for them and we mistake other sensations as actually being vibrations or uh, it can be auditory hallucinations as well. People can imagine that they're actually hearing uh, their cell phone go off and we didn't assess that but uh, that's also commonly been reported by people in the popular press. So, next time you feel a phantom vibration, you'll know why.